Hello, beautiful human. I'm Zach. That is Dan. Welcome back to the studio for the first time in a while. A dear friend and an incredible human being who has a brand new album out right now that you ought to listen to. There's a link in the description below for it. I'm talking about Madison Beer. The long awaited day. I've returned. I've made my return. Thank you. I'm giving you a standing Stop. ovation. Stop. Well, the, I, I feel the same. The album. Reciprocation. Well, the album is great. Thank you. Genuinely fucking amazing. Stop. No, it's really great. Thank you. I'm going to tell you how I knew. <laughs> this morning, I'm listening to it on repeat. Bunch since last night. Are I'm you lying? No. Are you fucking. Uh, I've been listening I'm gonna to it since yesterday. You. Okay. So. I'm like seeing somebody now. And we're in the shower together listening to your album. Whoa, what a way to start. <laughs> and Sorry. <laughs> we look at each other and he's like, this fucking finally genuinely sounds like Madison Beer. And I'm like, that's exactly what I was thinking. Like, there was no other comparison. There was no other anything. It was, this is Madison Beer. I'm going to cry. You really? really? Yeah, you've crafted and etched something out for yourself that is... Genuinely, like, b both honest, but, like, a really cool sonic kind of, like, scape that touches everything, and it's really good. It's really a beautiful body work. That means the literal world. Thank you. You should be really proud. Thank you so much. So, that's why you get a standing ovation. <laughs> Thank you. That's, like, the kindest thing anyone's ever said to me. Thank you. The gays love you. That's all I want in this life. That's yeah, quite <laughs> literally all I want. <laughs> what story are we telling with uh, Silence Between Songs? What story? Yeah, because there is a story mm. collectively from top to bottom, and it definitely gives the story of you, but... I feel like, yeah, this album is definitely, obviously, my story. It's just some of the most important things that have ever happened to me. Obviously, like I, when I say that, I think about the song about my brother. There's a song that's, like, sort of about my dad. Like, there's just, like, definitely very intimate things about myself, but I think, like, the title, per se, and all of it in general sort of came from this place of... I was going through a really hard time mentally, which I've said like 8,000 times, which I've had over the past couple of years, a lot of times. And it felt like I kind of realized that I was just running from things a lot. And I was like, oh, I'm fine. And I've, you know, I've done my work and now it's over. But I realized there was actually like so many more deep layers of work that I kind of had to do. And I just ran from it for a while. I've always been someone that turned to distractions and I've wanted to be like, no, I don't need to deal with that now. I'll deal with it tomorrow. But then every day is tomorrow and it's just like relative. And it like, you know, I just will forever be pushing this off. So finally, I just was like, I need to face these things, even if it's hard. And even if some of them are ugly, I think writing my book like was part of doing that, you know? I mean, but yeah, there's a lot like in your book, but also a lot of things that, and I've known you a long time, like long, long. genuinely like things that like, I, I forget that you had to go through and were subjected to and- yeah. I mean, things that, like, do you feel like you need to come to peace or at least, I don't know the right way to, like, phrase it. Like, like does your book... Like, I don't hold resentment, if that's, what, like, what you're asking. Like, mm -hmm. I think I very much so have come, I have come to peace with a lot of things. And sure, there can be moments where I'm, like, you know, X, Y, and Z. And I say this in my book a lot, where I'm, like, just because it happened and I'm okay with it now does not mean that it should have. And it doesn't yeah. make it okay. It's just more so, like, I don't believe in really, like, harboring hatred, resentment, sitting around every day and being like, you know, I fucking hate that this happened to me and it's so sad. It's like, well, now what are we going to do about it? So I've tried to just like, we're moving forward. But does coming to peace with all of that funnel into, or at least maybe allow you to write the album that we're, we're with today? Oh, for sure. Like, I don't think the song about my brother would exist if I wasn't able to admit all of those things. And I wasn't able to say like, I did have a part in not, I don't, I don't want to say ruining his childhood, but like, you know, like, Me messing his life up in a lot of ways. And you're like referring I, to the moment where he saw you over the balcony or what? That's one of the moments, but I'm just referring to overall, like getting signed at 12 years old. He was nine and then his life was just changed that day moving forward forever. And he kind of just like, yeah, like he, he didn't really have a say in a lot of things and we were all just wrapped up and like, oh my God, this is so exciting. And Madison has a career. Well, how crazy. But then Ryder just kind of was a part of it. You know yeah, what I mean? It. Oh, and it's yeah. just like now that I'm older, I've been able to be like, damn, you weren't being considered like you should have been. And neither was I. Like I wasn't being, and I was just a kid as well. So I don't like put too much guilt or shame on myself because I don't think that's fair. But I have been able to take responsibility and be like, you should have definitely been more cared for and more looked out for. And I don't think anyone did it on purpose. It's just more so like, you know, you didn't, you didn't deserve to feel ignored all those years, I guess. Was this the only way you could 
send that message to him or have this conversation with him? Yeah, kind of. I, I, I've tried to write a song about him for years now. Like I've always been like, I really want to write a song about my brother because I just obviously have such a special relationship with him and love him so much and have so much to say. But in the previous years where I've tried to, I've been like, yeah, this doesn't feel right. Like writing a song about like, you're the best brother ever and I love you. That's not all our relationship has been. It's been a very like complex, weird one. Like we've had a weird fucking life. So I feel like within the last, you know, like year or so coming to terms with a lot of those things that I talk about in the song, I've been able to, yeah, like say them to him. And he's been able to receive them, I think, in the least like awkward way possible, you know? <laughs> Cause I'm like, I'll just play you the song and you'll understand versus me sitting down and being like, hey, we don't do well with that. The song you're writing to your dad or for your dad, what what message are you trying to send? Is that at your worst? Yeah. Thought so. Love you, dad. <laughs> I played the first time he heard it. I was in like a huge label meeting with like literally over a hundred people. And I was like, this one's about you. And he was just like, oh, okay, cool. And then afterwards, everyone's obviously like, so like Rob, how do you feel about that? It's pretty like negative and sad. <laughs> and he was like, I think it's beautiful. I was like, sick. But he's, I have to say like with a song that is, you know, heavy, like at your worst, I have, I love my dad. This is just also part of our relationship and how I have felt in times. And I don't feel like I should like have to hide that. And I think it's this weird thing, like being somewhat in the public eye where you want to protect people and not per se like out them in things that they've done. But everyone, most, not everyone, most people that I know have had a difficult relationship with one of their parental figures at some point. And I know that I have. So I was just like, well, it's fine. It doesn't mean that I feel this way about him every day. This is just like part of our relationship. Oh, relationships are meant to have ups and downs. Exactly. A relationship that's all ups, like. Doesn't, yeah, doesn't you, exist. Yeah, you also don't even know what the ups are unless you Not that down. I know of, so. Nah. so. But what was your question about it? I forget. Where are you at when you're writing a record like that? Is it reflective or is it in the moment? I think it's like reflective and it's just me trying to be really honest. Like I feel like when I went into a lot of these songs, I was like, I don't want to restrain myself from anything. I don't want to like, you know, like I said, protect anyone. Like I want to just really write how I feel and like what I've gone through. And I don't want to pretend like I haven't gone through these things. I want to just like be honest. Do you set goals before you start this album? My main goal is for people to just resonate with it. And I know that sounds like the cheesiest, most like cop out answer, but I want people to just listen to it and hopefully relate. I want people who have had like, you know, similarities in their lives or parallels that they can listen to and be like, Oh, I, fully understand that and I've never heard someone articulate it like that I want people that's like really what I want to happen with this album but no I try not to like do the whole like I want a Grammy and I wanted this because I don't want to ever like let myself down and I don't think that that defines like if it was good or not you know so I just I'm trying to just be like no whatever happens happens you've alluded like to the life that you've lived to get to this point which is a crazy one and again like I, I've known you a long time literally over 10 years yeah it's nuts yeah. but to remind myself of all of it like you know because because yeah. again like every time i see you all the time you come on the show all the time yeah. but like it's it, it's a moment thing it's yeah. not necessarily like going back to the very beginning every time and then yeah. i finally like really just dude i totally forgot that you were dropped by your label mm -hmm. i totally forgot that you had blame put on you by adults in regards to a leak that happened when you were 14 years old oh yeah Big what time. The, what the fuck is that? Yeah, no, it's crazy. It is crazy to think about too, because I feel like I, like I said before, like ran from those things for so long, and I was just like, no, that was fine. And then I got older, and I had, you know, now I have like friends and people around me who are like, that is not fine. No, and I don't know how else to like say that to you. Like that is fucking insane. And then I've been like, wait, is it? <laughs> and I've had that moment of just like I didn't even know, because I've just always tried to be someone that like has empathy for other people. I always try to give everyone the benefit of the doubt and be like, you weren't trying to be evil or, you know, messed up. But now I'm like, whoa, not only were people around me at that time of like the leak stuff, blaming me, making me feel bad, but then also the internet like did nothing to protect me. Like this was at a time and people, it's funny because when I put up my book and spoke about that situation specifically, people couldn't believe it. They were like, there's no way that this is true because obviously now most of the time, if a fucking underage person has a video of them leaked, oh, it will be striked immediately. No one, it's not going over. And, and then, people will be arrested. It will be, it's, it's a whole thing. We burn down the town. Absolutely. Look, and we would rally around that young person and protect them. Totally. First and foremost. 100%. And that wasn't the case in 2014, 2015. It just wasn't, unfortunately. And the video was spread like wildfire. Everyone knew how old I was. And it just didn't matter. And it just was definitely like, at the time, I didn't think about that. I wasn't like, hey, I'm underage. 
by the way. But everybody else in your life should have. And I agree. The fact that they shifted blame to you. Oh yeah, makes they were me like, "What were you Ill. thinking? Why would you ever send Snapchats to a boy?" I'm like, "Because I am a 15 year old girl with an app that sends disappearing images." Well, and by the way, I think that was like the greatest <laughs> so, like lie ever fucking told to the young society oh, and generations. Sure. What which is, the fuck did you think that was going to happen? <laughs> yeah, everybody genuinely believed that everything you sent on Snapchat fucking went away. Oh yeah, and there was apps like Snap Save that. Yeah. The people who I was sending that to, the person or whatever, like, did have, and I was unaware of it. And it's messed up, and it's just, like, it is what it is, and I don't feel any shame now. Like, I don't, I'm not embarrassed to talk about it. I don't, I literally couldn't think it was more normal, and anyone, and I have had people, by the way, since it come out, be like, it's not normal, and it's not okay, and you shouldn't have done that. And I'm like, sure, that's... I'm sure that's... Fuck those people. What you want to say, like, I just disagree. Idiots. Profusely disagree. Idiots. Yeah, so... Idiots. I agree. Fuck. I, like now, like now, I want to burn the city down for you. Let's fucking do it. I'm ready whenever. I mean, yeah. What's the statute of limitations on this shit? Never. Are there we gonna get none. arrested even for saying that? Like, I'm scared. <laughs> what do you mean? Slightly for just saying that we want to burn the city down. Oh my <laughs> SWAT team enters. Bring it on. Um, <laughs> honestly, do you still have your uh, Japanese eraser collection? Fuck yeah, I do. It's never leaving my side. How big is it? It's in like a jar that you would imagine, like. Oreos to be in at someone's house. Okay. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah one yeah. of those jars. Um, it's in one of those and it's filled to the brim. I have halted collecting them years ago. I haven't, I don't think I've purchased a new one in a long time. Fans have like gifted me them before, but I haven't like seeked them out actively in a minute because I just feel like they're, they're somewhat like vintage now, the ones that I had. I got them when I was like nine. Yeah. You've been collecting, according to my notes, since you were seven or eight years old. Yeah, definitely. Tea. That and kooky pens. Do you remember kooky pens? Oh my god, yeah. That was my shit. <laughs> I, had a, I used to trade them at school. A the good old days. Yeah, started young. Can you tell me the story of Envy the Leaves? Sure. I <clears throat> started develop, developing a very like spiritual almost connection, I felt like, with trees literally and when i talk about this yeah but it stems from what do you do shrooms or something like i've done shrooms and i enjoy doing mushrooms but it's not where it stems from it actually stemmed from the time that i was like going through the real okay so in the song spin and this is just the whole album is tied together so in the song spin and i was going through a very like anxious i don't know how to explain it properly because it was so much more to me than just an anxiety attack it was literally every single night i would have a full-blown mental breakdown but like anxiety feeling in my body like i felt like i couldn't breathe i was just like freaking out i really don't know how to like describe it with words because it was such an intense feeling i would talk to my therapist every single night call her at 10 p.m crying just being like i don't know what to do right now like i literally feel like i need to be sedated like it was so intense so I wrote Spin In about like that time. And then during that time, I was sort of trying to go on like a spiritual journey and just be like how, cause a lot of my anxiety was rooted in like death anxiety. So I was like, how can I work away from this? And in that I just started to like, I don't know, like look around me and just really appreciate like life in different forms. And I sound like so weird when I talk no. about this, I feel like, but I just like, I don't know. Yeah. Like I had like a, <laughs> like I just, I just had like a very, crazy moment where I was like I remember I used to have this tree in my backyard of my old house that I was like whoa you are alive and living in a whole different way and it's just crazy and then it started this thought of like how simple must life be that you know you're a tree and I'm this person that's having anxiety attacks every night and I doubt you're having anxiety attacks you seem like you're chilling you know trees definitely <laughs> chilling <laughs> so that's where that came from are you afraid of death uh for sure yeah what is that connected to, really? I think my, like, a lack of control. I have control issues. In when it's going to happen? In or how? what or? happens after. Oh. Like, I don't like not having answers to things, and I don't like being out of control. It's, like, a really... And I think that all just stems from, like, my life being kind of given to other people. Like, you get to control me in every way, so when I feel like I'm out of control, that's when I get the most afraid and, like, just... I freak out, and death is the ultimate time that you have no control. So I think I'm just petrified of like what I don't want to be dead for the rest of time. What? But Sorry. you're going to be remembered forever. Let's not get into this right now. Yeah, I hope so. No, I won't be though. I won't be. Oh, well, not forever, but right. it, well, and I that's mean, scary. Well, it like, depends on how, what, what's how you going define on in, forever. But it's not even being remembered. Like I just want to be a part. I want to be here, man. I want to be a part of it all. I want to see everything. I want to know what's going on. Your severe FOMO. I, I guess that's just what it stems in. I have really fucking bad FOMO. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I think I am 
enjoying life lately and I don't want it to ever end. Have which you is so nice coming from someone who used to be like actively suicidal. I'm like, now I actually really don't ever want to die. Sick. Why do you enjoy life now? What changed? Oh, I mean, I think so much. Like, I feel like I've just surrounded myself with better people. I think that I've like grown to love myself. I've stopped letting people define me. Like, I just, there's so many reasons that I think I've just been able to be like, I, yeah, like I, even the bad days that I still have, of course, I still have like tough days and hard times, but I feel like they're part of it. And I kind of en not enjoy them, but like when I come out of them, I'm like, oh, I gained perspective and insight from that situation. So have you taken back control in any ways that you maybe had given it up in the past? Like you oh, said in every you, single way. Yeah. Like you said, you would give yourself to other people to kind of just do as they wish. Yeah. No, now I'm like very much so like boundaries are huge. Like I, if you asked me something I was like not ready to talk about, I'll just be like, not, I'm not talking about that instead of always feeling like I have, I Obligated. have to like, I've just, yeah, I don't know. I just started doing myself what I would do for my friends, which is just like, I'm defending myself. If I need to be, I'm removing myself out of situations that I don't feel comfortable in. I'm not going to like sit and scroll and read through a million comments that are just going to make me feel shitty about myself all day. Um, and I don't know, like I've just created those boundaries within myself and within my life that I'm, I'm just like, I don't need to feel miserable all the time and I could change that and I like direct my own music videos I like write my own songs I co-produce them like I I have a hand in everything you know so I really I really do like control it all I guess I've been looking for a change so I uh tried HelloFresh seriously I I've been eating out chronically it's bad and I want to try to cook and I don't know how to cook but I can cook this HelloFresh thing they send everything you need to your house in a box, and then they send instructions that are so basic and easy that even I can, I can do it. I can do it, too. It's so delicious. They have 40 different options every week, 100 different add-ons. There's something for absolutely everybody, and it's really healthy, too, um, and it's easy to do. 15-minute meals are available on there. It's, come on, nothing better than it. It beats the grocery store. It beats ordering out, and it's just convenient, and if you, you got a lover at home or a family, it makes it even fun. You know, you, you can cook with everyone and anyone. And again, like, if I can do it and do it successfully, like, you can too. Because I, I really can't cook much. So if you want to try it out, you can get 50% off right now. Plus, uh, they'll hook you up with 15% off your next two months worth of HelloFresh. So that's 50% off plus 15% off the next two months uh, when you get the box. If you want to try it out, go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 Zach Sang. That is HelloFresh.com slash 50 Zach Sang, and enjoy it. So let me know how it goes. Like, send me photos of your meal. I want to see. You said spinning and Envy the Leaves are connected, but kind are of. all the songs connected? Yeah, like I Wonder is also a response to spinning. Mm. They're, so they're kind of all just intertwined. What are you looking to accomplish in the response? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not looking to accomplish anything but, like, make people love the music. Genuinely. But like. I just want people to like, I've listened to songs and I've listened to albums and music before that I've been like, whoa, like you get it. And I want someone or people to feel that same way. And I want people to be like, I get it. You get it. This is so cool that you wrote about this. Understood. And that's kind of, that's what I felt this morning. And there were yeah. certain records that I felt more understood by. Yeah. Obviously than others. Sure. But and like, everyone will have like their different connections. Dude, spinning is one of them. But now I'm going to go back and listen differently knowing that they are jet like. Yeah. More deeply connected. Well, now when you listen to I Wonder, you'll hear, you'll hear that the lyrics were kind of like mirrored by Spinnin'. Like Spinnin' is like, did the world stop spinning? Like the sky is so gray. And I Wonder is like, the sky is blue. I wonder why. Kind uh, of. So it's like. A, I get it. Now. It's like the positive one. The, the positive sister. Of is Spinnin'. king of everything connected to anything? <laughs> sure it is. Hmm. And I know this is a question that Dan is going to talk to me about. I. <laughs> this is a Dan question. No, keep going. <clears throat> mm -hmm. No, I just like how it starts. It starts with you like literally walk. It sounds like you're walking to a, the piano, right? Yeah. Sick. I love that you noticed that. Thank you. When did you write this song? <laughs> Here we go. Um, I wrote this song actually a long time ago. Do you want me to tell you the date? Yeah. I wrote this. This was. This is one of the you older. Have receipts. I do. I've got all the receipts. Zach. The first version uh, was yes. made on May 15th, 2021. Okay. So interesting a long timing. Time ago. What's interesting about that timing? No, today's timing. Yep. Shut up, Dan. I didn't say anything. <laughs> um What pushes you to write a record like that? And why does it end the album? 
Well, I think it ends the album because of the outro. Honestly, yeah. that's like I love that outro so much, and I was like, "This is how I want the album to finish. It's how I want potentially the tour to finish." I don't know if that's going to be for sure, but like I, I just loved the outro, and I was like, "There's nothing that could follow this up." Didn't you say at one point it started the album? It did at one point. It like the the track list changed, but that was prior to us making the outro. Okay. Once I made that outro, I was like, "This is the last song." Oh, gotcha. Non-negotiable. But what inspires me to make that? I I mean, I don't know. I've been the ha- at the hands of like very powerful men my whole career. And I think that like whether it's been whether it's been friends or people I've worked with <laughs> or people I've dated, whatever it is like there's this is not this is not just about one person. This is about a mixture of a bunch of people that I've been in situations with where, you know, I've seen them like have a rise and a fall. And I've also seen a lot of a lot of really very early on when I started, like when I came came out to LA and I started working with people, the curtain was like ripped back very quickly for me. And I was like, wow, some of the most like powerful, rich, successful, specifically men are like some of the loneliest, saddest people. And I, and it was kind of crazy to me. because so I was like, isn't that what everyone in life is like, oh, I want all those things. But then I know so many of these people who have those things and they're alone. Like I say in that song, like you sleep in the bed alone, like that view from the top isn't what you thought it would be. Like those lyrics, like... I don't know. I think that's, it's also representative more so about it being about a specific person. It is more so representative of like, there's a lot more to life than wanting to like rule the world and be like powerful and successful. Like being around people you love and feeling loved and supported is like significantly more important. And that's also what this song means. That, By the way, yes, love is everything. At the end of the Just day. so much more important. To write a song like that, but also have full control. That is like a full circle moment. Oh, definitely. And I think that's also why it, it ended it. Cause I'm just like, yeah, now I, yeah, no one, no one like rules. No one rules this castle, but me. <laughs> that's how I feel. What does silence between songs mean to you? It means like being comfortable with the silence and like allowing yourself to be alone and be still and not be afraid of that. And with that comes getting to know who you are outside of making music and definitely. a fucking phone or whatever. Exactly. It's important. It's so important. Scary as shit. Scary as shit, but like well worth it, I think. There was a lot that I was like, I don't know if I'll recover after like uncovering some of this stuff. But it's just, it's helped me. I think I'm someone that like seeks out, I guess, like knowledge and insight, even if it's scary. How are you? I mean, yeah, by the way, the quest for information. Yeah, never ending. Yeah, but it is always frightening. (laughs) Scary, for Because sure. even when you get one answer, it just pushes you to look for another. Yeah. And I also feel like I know enough. But I also want to know more. <laughs> so, the pickle I'm in. The pickle of my life. Uh, <laughs> nothing matters but you. Mm, yeah. Is that about somebody you love? Yeah. Do you write that realizing that you're in love with this person? And also, like, are you telling stories first or writing the production? Uh. Mm, more telling stories or like chords will come and then the story but cool. never like production will come first so um where are you at mentally when you're writing nothing matters but you i think i'm at like a okay like i i've recognized that like i have like a kind of like an obsessive tendency tendency with people like i'll become just like i need to spend every day with you every second like i'm just obsessed with you and that's kind of was the inspiration of this of like how can i articulate that in the least creepy way possible because I really am, like, that's, like, my personality type. Like, if you're my favorite person, good luck to you because I will <laughs> harass you and quite literally become obsessed with you. Do most of the people you're obsessed with stick around or does it get to a point where it just implodes? <laughs> um, most of the people are, like, stop fucking texting me and calling me. It's getting really annoying. And I'm like, please, I have no other friends. But, no, they stick around, luckily. As of lately, they've been sticking around. Healthy. Sure, trying. Lately, <laughs> lately they've been sticking around. I don't know. What happened prior to that? He's suddenly playing with everything in front of me. Um, What happened prior to that? I mean... A lot of them fleeting. I was just, like, super young, and I think I was, like, maybe friends with not the right people or, like, I don't know. My my just, like, what I want out of friendships and relationships has changed a lot. I've also had people, like, do, like, kind of gnarly things to me, and, Mm -hmm. like, I've just, like, I don't know. A lot of my, like, honestly, some of my closest relationships have, like, fizzled out over the past couple of years, but... But God's truth, not all friendships are meant to be forever. No, and, like, they were, like, served purpose for at a certain time and I just feel like I need to be around people that I think I can like align with and make me feel happy and I don't know that's it yeah I don't like going out a lot of those people like going out a lot that's really a tough thing to get by oh I understand that yeah 
Well, we can being like out. physically dragged out of my house, and I'm like, no. Yeah, I don't do that. No, not anymore. I hang out at my house now. Me too. Yeah. How yeah. great is hanging out at your house? No, it's sick. People can come to me. It's just the best thing. Like, yeah. It's so funny. I was saying to someone recently, I'm, like, I'm, and I know people who are older than me are going to roll their eyes when I say this, but like, I'm starting to feel what it feels like to like be like, okay, I'm getting excited that like I'm having landscaping lights put in yeah. tomorrow, <laughs> and that I'm just like I am getting a little bit older. I'm like not like, oh, do I want to go to like this nightclub? No. Fuck no. I'm getting landscaping lights put in. I can't wait. No. I literally can't sleep. Like I'm a kid. Like before the first day of school. I understand that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I put in uh, cactuses I'm, and like these banana trees. How excited! Yeah. Banana trees? No, yeah. Well, and then I put some tomatoes in, some onions, <gasps> some carrots. I got some jalapenos growing. Whoa! Yeah, I, I so I have a moms. garden, but I just can't find someone who can like keep it up properly. And well, I do not have a green thumb, so it's not going to be me. If you need me to give you somebody, I got somebody. Please do. Yeah, of course. I would love that because I have a full <laughs> like vegetable garden bed that's just like extremely overgrown and like there's just like crazy sized eggplants and like weird sh it's just like it needs to be taken care of oh that's amazing though no it's it's you, sick yeah, it came with go, my house like oh, it's amazing you gotta go see them pick them i know i know got some little cherry tomatoes oh i, I i'm only growing full-size tomatoes right now no cherries i would like to grow heirloom tomatoes oh mm -hmm. that's what i'm growing they're nice i would like that they're big and thick i love it big and thick me too I walked right into that one. Sorry. Well, we I, didn't mean, did. I didn't mean to give it, I didn't mean to put it there. I was really just describing it. To tomato. tomato. Yeah. <laughs> this is interesting. Can we talk about showed me? Sure. You asking this question to yourself or asking this question to somebody else? Well, it's a sample. No, but, but, but like. So yeah, I but, didn't ask the question originally. Yeah, but I, under, but we, in, in, yeah, yeah, but in the song you're asking something, yeah. you're trying to figure something out. Yeah, like I think it's just like. I had a relationship with someone at some point who has a very like charismatic way about them and is like good at just talking to people. And I feel like they kind of showed me how to like be that a little bit. And I feel like still to this day, I have like s some semblance of that, like still left over where I'm like, okay, I see what you do. And you understand how you fell in love with them from that. Yeah. Yeah, I do. For sure. So you learned what made you fall for them. Totally. So you can use it on other people. Totally. How's it working? It's working great. Sick. Casting spells left and right. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of Daniel? Um, the album cover is lovely. Don't we love it? We do love it. Thank you. I love it. Wasn't that not the original one? I hated the other one. Those was the, the other one's from the other music video, right? Oof is my response to that. <laughs> it's got to be a little more than an oof. It's a... Oof, like I literally like couldn't even look at it because it was just driving me up a fucking wall. And listen, all respect to the picture. It's a cute picture. It's fine. But it is not. It is not the album. You listen to the whole thing. That yeah. is not what the fucking album is. And I always like I can show you pictures that I have saved as like inspo of what I want my next album to look like. And it's always been like a girl swimming in a lake with lily pads or like a girl laying under a big tree or like all of these inspo pictures have all been in nature. They've all been like very natural, very stripped back. That is quite literally the opposite of what the other picture was. So I changed it. And that's that. You did the right thing. Thank you. Thank you. You really did. Because this album is going to, my thought process is this album will outlive me. And so, yes. unfortunately, this album will outlive me. So I'm like, why not? <laughs> just like, why not make it something I love? Because in 50 years from now, no one's going to remember the old cover art. They're only going to remember the one that it was. You oh, know? 100%. So I think whatever. And you have the control. So why the fuck wouldn't you do exactly what you want to do? Exactly. That, like, it just doesn't make sense to me. That is how I feel. Well, good, good decision. Thank you. I agree. I look at that picture and I'm like, this is the album. No, because the album genuinely is, is giving timeless. And I think you're going to be one of the few people who has a sophomore album that exceeds their fr like their first one. Do you think that? Oh, I know it, yeah. Oh, you're so amazing. Oh, yeah. Also, Home to Another One's fucking amazing. Thank you. Isn't it a fun song? Uh, yeah, your label should have worked that more to the radio. I'll let Rick Sackheim know. That Please was a good fucking song. Give dude. him a call. Uh, sh uh, he's on the list to show up today, too. I wonder if he's even coming by. Probably not. No? What? No. Man, no one likes you. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is my is problem. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my life. <laughs> Welcome. That's good. Take it back. No, we're here. We showed up for her. I guess we needed no, to be No, no, it's okay. You don't have to take it back. Um, so I know. how long have you been working on this album? It seems like it's been in the works for a while. Over two years. Well oh. over two years. Has been done for a while or did you think it was done and you're like, wait, it's not done? And it was done it's... 62 times and then I was like, 
waking up in the middle of the night with fucking hot sweats being like, oh my God, I don't like that one song and I need to like re-deliver it and it's bad. And I have so many dramatic videos. I, I record a lot of things like on my photo booth because I'm like, one day if I ever make a documentary, I'll use this. And I called my previous manager at the time crying hysterically being like, I I know that we delivered it and I know that it's coming out, and but I don't like it. And I need to go back in and change things. And she was obviously chill with it. So we went back in a bunch of times. We changed it a bunch of times. I'm very indecisive. And I'm never satisfied. Even now, there are things that I would change. To like be, what? Like, I don't even know. But I know that I could and I would. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get I'm it. I'm just never satisfied. Like, I I literally will never be satisfied with anything in my life ever. And so, I'm always like, I want to change this and change that. And then a week later, I'm like, but now I want to change it back. or I want Like, I am very just back and forth. Is there anything from the first pass of this album that stuck around to what Spinning. we're listening to? Spinning is like barely was touched after it was first made really which is crazy yeah it, we made that song and we we're like this will be on the album no matter what king of everything we also we've changed like some things too but we knew that that was gonna make it for sure for so sure the, for sure that's the first song and the last song i don't think of what else well reckless is on there so we obviously yeah, yeah that came like three years two years ago i know it's been forever yeah why'd you put that on there those streams, boy. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, I also, I mean, but I also think that it does like fit with it and yeah. it, it wasn't part of life sport and it was kind of this in-between song. And I just, I, again, like, because it's not on a project, I want it to be on a project. Like I want people to listen to sounds between songs and, and hear it. Maybe if they've never heard reckless, they can be like, Oh, this is also just a song on the album. <laughs> I did write this note down. Um, there weren't many upbeat songs on the album. So you added more after loving boy shit live. Yeah, that is true. The album was like, like without Sweet Relief and Home to Another One. And even like I would consider Showed Me like upbeat, I guess. But there there was like none, honestly. Like all of them were kind of more ballady, more like acoustic sort of emotional songs. And then I was like, mm, I really want something that I can like look forward to performing every night. But I'll probably still perform some of those older songs as well. But you'll have to wait and see. I mean, I, I've actually never been to a Madison show. Are they good? Is it worth it? Really? The yeah. fuck did you just say? <laughs> you went, didn't you? Oh, yeah, I've been to. Yeah, yeah. I've seen you perform more than once. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I asked uh, Zach. I can't speak. She's to amazing. Me. She's incredible. Yeah, and you. th your set design, like you, the thank aesthetic you. on stage. The last one I saw was the one with all the TVs. What? You didn't go to Life Support? Oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about then. No, wait. Damn. That's as she pleases. That's like fucking six years ago. I have stepped it up. Wait. Your Life I mean, was one where I was wearing like the little dresses and the little like you, like with the bow. Maybe I did go to that. I thought you did, but you might have not. Where, which is what, fine. Wait, the will turn. No, I did go to that. I swear you did. Yeah, I did go to okay, that. I'm like, you swear you did. With yeah, the big yeah, yeah. screen. Oh my God. Yes, yes, and the yes, box yes, yes, that rolls yes, me yes, out. yes. Yeah, yeah, oh okay, my God. Yes. I was like, I swore you were there. Yeah, sorry. But I, it's okay. honestly, the first. I remember the first time yeah, I ever was, saw you do a show, though. Yeah, at the Belasco. Yeah, was mm -hmm. it was fucking great. Thank you. It was so. I mean, really, from the first the first time I've watched you perform, your, Thank the you. aesthetic of the performance and like your vocals are through the roof. But Thank like, you. you really create an experience, and it feels very intimate at the same time. You gotta go. Oh, you right. gotta go. I'm playing. Oh no uh, way! That's a good size. I don't know venue. if it's gonna be out yet. At uh, I think in. Sometime in April, May area. So we have a, we have ways away, but that's 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 exciting. And that's so, big. I'm so excited. I could cry my well, eyes out and scream. But you have to come because it will be really fun. I'll and be at that and one. I did want to like do um I did want to do some like more upbeat kind of songs on the album just in case I decided not to do old songs, which I will. I know so many some of my fans just went <gasps> like home with you. We be doing like home with you and stuff like that. No. <laughs> oh. Not home with you. Okay. No home with you. Wow. No melodies. None of it. But I'll maybe do, like, life support stuff. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. Maybe boy shit will happen. Anything prior to, like, anything... I don't know, though. I say that now, and then I'm like, I maybe will do some, like, as she pleases stuff for, like, the OGs, but I don't know. Listen, Madison, the fans love it. I know. I just am, like, scared. It. I will never sing melodies. Like, no one could pay me enough money. <laughs> no one... There's no offer that would be on the table that I would say yes to, so... You roasted some guy <laughs> in the comment section... I did? Really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have it right here. What yeah. did I do? Some guy said, he said, hey, Madison, I've noticed that your legs and arms are getting fatter. Oh, my God. Please do some cardio. We men only like skinny girls. And then she, he goes on to say that your face is perfect, but please, we love a thin-waisted girl. Ugh. What a disgusting pig. You are a fucking trash can. Like Who mind, probably has never been within, like, 10 feet of a fucking girl, so oh, shut the fuck oh, up, but the, continue. The, the, the only fucking woman that would even look in your direction is your mother. Okay. Also, maybe, probably not. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Madison responds, though, by saying, I wouldn't touch you 
with a 10-foot pole if you paid me a million dollars. And I meant what I said. Well, I just think the comment pissed me off less for me because I actually don't really give a fuck about what our boy has to say. Yeah. Like, quite literally, I couldn't care less. But it pissed me off because I know that other girls will read that and be like, well, if you're saying that she's heavy, then what am I? And that pisses me the fuck off because I don't need any fucking girl out there to ever read that and be like, well, they're calling Madison beer not skinny and she's skinnier than me. So, and I'm like, that just like annoys me. You know, that just makes me feel really upset. And I knew that people, and it, the, the only reason I responded to it was the, the comment already had a lot of responses to it. Yeah. And I was like, I need to jump in here because I don't need anyone on the planet reading that and feeling bad about themselves or like, I just, anyone who talks about people's bodies can quite literally go fuck themselves all day, every day. And I'm just, I get so, it like pisses me off so much. It like bothers me beyond belief. Amen. Amen. Just shut the fuck up. Amen. Sorry. Amen. I didn't know that your bot mitzvah theme was Madison Square Garden. It was. That's pretty fucking good. Madison's Square Garden and the whole thing just had like a, like turf around the edges of it. It was literally in a square garden. That was my <laughs> genius idea. No joke. That's good. That really, my good genius idea. really good stuff. Yeah. Yep. Do you remember that party? I do, vividly. I performed at that fucking party. Fuck you, you did. I performed <laughs> my song called Life's a Beat. Yeah, you fucking ate. Oh, I ate that shit all the way up. You know I did. I was wearing these little sparkly booty shorts, with like a pink tube top. There's such an awkward video, which I'm sure someone can like scour the internet for, where I like, I like pull my, I try to like pull, start pulling my friends to like dance with me. And like I pull one girl and she just like turns around and walks away. And like no one wanted to stay and dance with me. Um, I but it. I handled it like a pro. You I handled it. it. Yeah, like she grabs this girl. You found it? Yeah, the girl just walks away. <laughs> yeah, she just dips. She's like, no, that's I think literally my friend Marley. She was like, mm, no, I don't want to be the only one standing here. But then eventually, Eventually they all come around me. Oh my god, I just outed the craziest song I've ever made. Yeah. Life's a beat, turn it up. I think that's how it goes. You Oof. should play that one on tour. That sounds upbeat. But no one knows that one. They'd be like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> now they do. Like if I did melodies, people would be like, oh my god, aw. But if I did this, they'd be like, what? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Me and when we were making the album, we wrote a song called Photosynthetic Babies, and it was a joke. What? So I'll explain. It was a joke song. I wish I fucking had it. I can't find it anywhere, and neither can Leroy, because we like titled it something weird, whatever. So Oscar, you remember Oscar? Yeah. So Oscar came to the studio, and he was on his way, and we had just made, I think we had just made Baby. We had just finished Baby. And I was like, he's going to fucking love this song so much. I know he's going to. I know he's going to flip shit and he's going to just be like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. So we have to make something that we can play it for him beforehand to just like test his response. Because <laughs> we had been hyping it up all day. Like, bro, you, you got to come to the studio tonight. You're going to love this record. And he was so excited. So we, within an hour, we like made a song, which I'll find it. And if I find it by the time this comes out, I will send it to you so you can play it. Thank but you. it was like... We had no concept, of course. So so Leroy just leaned on the piano like this and a bunch of keys got hit and it was just like, like it was just absolutely ridiculous. And we used that as like the opener. And then I just was like, bar like I would like, I would be like, first of all, I couldn't even sing it because my voice was, sh I was laughing so much. I couldn't <laughs> sing. And the lyrics were like, um, you give me life, you give me water, my photosynthetic baby. <laughs> and it was just made no sense. And it was just like the dumbest thing ever. And then it, the ad libs would be me like, Woof! like I would bark in the background. <laughs> and we played it for Oscar. We finished the song. We played it for Oscar. And we're all, by the way, we are s four of us. It's me, Jeremy, Tim, and Leroy. And we're sitting there trying so hard to just like be like, you know, sell it as well as we could. And he's, he's listening to it. And I can see Oscar's like... <laughs> And we're just like, I am trying so hard not to fucking cry laughing. And I, of course I couldn't hold it in because I'm a seven year old. And he turned around and I was just like hysterically laughing. He was like, what? And I was like, what'd you think of the song? And he was like, I think, I, he was like, I want to listen to it again. That was like what he said. And I was like, oh my fucking God. And then we told him that it was like a joke and we played him baby, but I miss that. I want to play that on tour. It's my point of bringing that up. Photosynthetic baby coming to the Silence Between Songs. Tour. Damn. Yep. If you need another reason to buy tickets, you yeah. found it. You have it now. Lucky you. <laughs> now, also, all Madison Beer's music is waiting for you, uh, and, and uh, it's on Amazon Music. So, link in the description below. Click it if you want it. You should want it. It's there. Uh, same thing with this album. It's all up there. It's can all you, there. Can you uh, take us into the studio with Leroy? Like, what is that like? What do you bring him, and how does it all come together? It's the best times ever. Like, I just love being in a room with him. I love spending time with him and I love making music with him so much. And we have like, you know, a few other people that we make music with and it's, you know, One Love, Kinetics, uh, 
Tobias Jesso Jr. worked on a few mm. songs. Like we just have had so many. This girl Lucy Healy was amazing. Like we've had so many people work on this album that are just incredible that I'm so lucky to work with. So I just love making music so much. So when I go into the studio, I mean, like specifically with Leroy he'll either have like been having a concept that he was like oh I think this would be cool to write about like I'll usually tell a story of some kind not knowing that it'll be a song I'll just be like this happened and this happened and then Leroy is secretly like typing on his computer notes about it and then the next day he'll be like so I have an idea and I'll be like okay cool let's get into it and then we'll just like either we usually will write the chords first like we'll go on the piano or the guitar pick whichever feels or sounds better pick the chord progression and then I'll kind of freestyle a melody over it and then we'll just start writing the lyrics. And I've like grown to really love songwriting. I used to like dread writing lyrics to a song because I just thought that I wasn't good at it. And now, now I love doing it. And I, it's like one of my favorite parts. I love it. Is it because of what you're going through? So you have more to pull from or who you're working with? Combination of both? Yeah. And I think I'm just like not boxing myself in anymore. And I'm not being like, oh, I'm too scared to say this. Like I'll say, I'll say what I want to say. And like, I just, yeah, I don't know. It's just fun. And I've always loved like writing poetry and like write just writing in general. So I think that now loving songwriting has been awesome and so fun for me. Fuck yeah. Mm -hmm. It's you're in control, sis. And we say slay to that. <laughs> that is what we say. Slay. What a good word, huh? Yeah. It really is. Like it's just one of those things that when it first when it first became popular, uh I was like, this is gonna go away so quickly and people were using it like in a cringy way. Now it's like, if you say slay, you get it. You know what I mean? Oh, totally. Like when someone's like slay, I'm like, I'm not like, okay, you use like internet lingo. I'm like, slay. And when you hear somebody say like something like slay mama boots. You... Slay mama boots the house down. You're like, whoa, you understand. Yeah. It's that yeah. one. You know what's going on. I... You wouldn't get it. This is, we're speaking right now, yeah. Dan. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Stay out of this one. Stay out of that. Do you dislike <laughs> being a sex symbol? Because you definitely are one. <sighs> Uh, I don't know that like dislike is the right word. I think like just, um, maybe the objectification side of it is like not always so fun, but like, um, yeah, I think it's just weird because I can post like quite literally never anything like provocative. Cause I, I really don't think that if you look on my Instagram, like I've ever really posted anything that's like sexy, like too much, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think that it just sometimes gets a little bit, yeah, like I don't, I do not like being objectified nor does anyone I don't like people like looking at me as yeah I don't know how to like articulate this but I it's not something like I can complain about I think it's like obviously a compliment if people have that feeling towards me but like I just also don't think that that should be the only feeling and I don't I think that like women sex symbols whatever I also don't look at myself as a sex symbol so like when you said that I was like whoa but women specifically who are sex symbols I feel like just get like so objectified and it's just like only ever about like their bodies and they're like just just anything. And I don't I don't like that at all. Sorry, I'm like not making any sense. No, you you're making a bunch of sense. Are you queer? Like, I mean, I'm bi. Yeah. Do I fall under the umbrella? Yeah, of course. I don't know. But have you come out as bi? Yeah. Like you have, right? Because I've heard a hundred times. Yeah, my, okay, got it. But like not Why did I know that until my producer brought it up to me today. Maybe I haven't actually. I think I only really came out once. Because I also don't like feel you like You shouldn't have to come out. Coming out is a dated thing, but if you feel like you need to, you should live your truth however you choose. Totally. But you, but know, you shouldn't have to like you shouldn't have to. No, when's the last time like a straight person pulled you aside and was like, just wanna let you know, like I'm heterosexual. Yeah, I don't I don't really that's why I, I think I actually when I say I've came out a hundred times, I don't. Um think that's true i think i've actually only really said it a few times because i just like also don't i don't know not that i don't think people are entitled to it it just like doesn't i don't know i don't think that people's sexuality like should i guess like define them like i think it's just like i actually don't really care who you want to sleep with you know what i mean yeah, 100%. i don't really <laughs> yeah, care who gives a shit who cares like it doesn't affect me but yes i also definitely <laughs> like girls a lot i had a song on the album about a girl that i had a relationship with in a, a bit of a way and I scrapped it because it wasn't, the song just wasn't good, but also, yeah. What was it happened. called? It was called The Way She Loves Me. Was this girl a celebrity? Mm. You can be honest. I think I've heard about this relationship. No, you have not. Maybe I have. Who? You tell me. No, you have not. <laughs> no, not really. I don't know. No, no, no. Got it. No. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> My God. Wait, so Brittany Broski. 
Let's talk about Brittany Rose. Are you like friends with her? And how does that friendship begin? I am friends with her and I couldn't love her any more than I do. She is just so amazing. And like, I don't know. I think that like I've had, you know, like I said earlier, I've had like a lot of friendships, I guess, out here. I've been friends with like, whether it's, you know, other artists, influencers, people in just like the industry, you know how it is. Like when you go out, you just see like all yeah. types of people and from all different worlds and whatever. She's just like one of those people that I think seeing her, how did that friendship begin? That's a really good question because I don't know the answer to it. Was it before or after Coachella? Because I- uh, Oh, before, before. You saw us together? Yeah, I ran into you guys. Yeah, yeah. So she, I definitely was the one who DM'd her, I think, and was just like, you are so fucking funny and like- I cry laughing at everything that comes out of your mouth and you're just amazing and I love you and like I need to hang out with you one day. Um, and we like never really did. And then I want to say like before, okay, so before Reckless came out, she came to my house and I played it for her and I showed her the video and she was crying and she was just like so <laughs> fucking cute. And I was like, I just love her. And we had such a fun night together and it was just like, not awkward or weird which is kind of like rare uh. and it was just great and then ever since then we've like hung out just us two a few times and like she's just a very special person and i think like the internet knows her as like this really funny like you know just like loud hysterical like just like witty person but like she's like also just so sweet and empathetic and like emotionally intelligent in so many ways and like has really just seen me for who I am and like that's been something that's been just like very refreshing and nice and because sometimes I look at people like that and I'm like you're never gonna think I'm like <laughs> anything like I don't know like worth being friends with but she has quite literally made that like so untrue and she just will say like even here she said the nicest things about me and by the way behind your like when we got dinner she oh she was like saying the nicest kindest things about you i just love and her. I think it was right when you're maybe you guys maybe you reached out or hung out once probably yeah. yeah she's just amazing and i just really value people like that who i feel like you know like like i said the internet knows her as like what she is and that is her but she's also such a like gentle yeah. kind sweet beautiful soul and i just love her and we have such like awesome deep fucking conversations about like we trauma bond super hard and all that stuff and whatever, but she's, she's just great. And I'm really grateful to have her as a friend. She's fucking awesome. And her close friend story is, keeps me entertained. Oh, hell yeah, it does. It's too good. Too good. Brittany Broski, we love you. We fucking love you. Um, I'm helping her design her house right now. Are you? The new one? Mm-hmm. Sick. I love her. You have good taste. Thank you. Remember that time I beat you out for an apartment that you really wanted? We will never live that down. <laughs> Because, yes, I'm honestly glad I didn't get it because I ended up loving the apartment I did get, but that was like a blow. That, you got to understand. I was like, <laughs> you were walking, weren't you walking I'm, in and I was walking out? Yeah, they were, they were and like, I was like, somebody's up there seeing it right now. And I had this thing in my mind. I'm like, I'm going to know whoever's walking down. I just was it on the 11th it. floor. Uh, yeah, 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 I remember yeah, yeah. that. 11 or 7. I remember that. Yeah, the, it, that shit scarred me. Stunning. You scarred me. Stunning apartment. Beautiful apartment. How long did you live there for? Uh, two or three years. Yeah, that was a great place. Yeah. Motherfucker. <laughs> really nice. Piece of shit. <laughs> and I, never forget I that. I don't even know. I, I just I remember like, was mom. like, can I text him and like beg him to not? And then I was like, nah, it's whatever. It's fine. <laughs> I it was between the two of us. I was going to like threaten you. I was going to text you and be like, you don't want to fucking know what I'll do. <laughs> yeah, it was between literally you and I. We both were applying for it and you won. You won the battle. How did Zach beat out you? Dude. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I was also, like, an 18-year-old girl that had never, like, rented anything before, so they probably were like, mm, we're going to go with him. Their biggest fear... They were uh, Madison Beer haters. No, their biggest <laughs> fear <laughs> was that you were going to walk around, and it was a celebrity building, meaning there's a lot of celebrities who live there, and the woman who lived underneath is a woman named Nancy Sinatra, oh. who was very old. Frank's it wife? Is old. I think, I don't know, something related to... Yes. Definitely, I would assume, related to <laughs> the Frank. And the Frank. And they were afraid that... Uh, You'd Little walk around me. in heels or throw parties. Ah, uh, yes. And they'd hear Is you. Is that what underneath. they told you? Yes. That's what women do. They walk around their apartments I in swear heels. On a See, stack. look at the society we live in. It's disgusting. <laughs> and that was uh Meanwhile, the years 20, like 17. I mean, they weren't wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but I definitely was never throwing parties at oh, my I apartment. I threw way more parties than I'm you would sure have ever. you were more of a nuisance than oh, I would have yes. been. But I did I never threw parties at my apartment I ended up moving into. I definitely had people over, but like maybe the most people that's ever been in my place were like 50. 10, 15 at a time. Oh, the uh, most yeah. ever. Well, I've had like 30. Yeah, there's no way place. I've ever had more than that. But I also like never played loud music. I was always a very good neighbor. And I don't wear fucking heels. I <laughs> never wear heels. Hello? I <laughs> never wear heels. I will wear Uggs every day until I die if it was up to me. <laughs> I love your outfits. This Thank is, you. Yeah, your aesthetic right now is nice. Quintessential 
Madison outfit. It's if you ever stuff. see me in anything else, I was forced to be in anything else. Oh, I have a rule. If there's a dress code or I have to wear a suit, I'm not going. If there's a dress code, like some, okay, it depends. I think if there's a theme, how do you feel about like a theme? I'm okay with a theme. I'm down with a theme. I'm down with a theme. Kind of makes my life easier. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm definitely down with a the theme, but if they're like, you have to dress up or dress nice, count me out. Really? I'm staying home. I mean, I'm staying home from, like, there's, I don't even need that like, reason. That's true. Yeah. If someone's like, hey, you're invited to this party, I'm yeah, like, I'm okay. <laughs> that's, I'm staying that's, home. You make a good point. And then I can use the excuse of the attire thing. Yeah. But no, I, yeah, I fucking hate going out now. It's so crazy. Like, I, I never was someone that, like, loved going out because I don't really drink alcohol at all. So I've just, like, I don't know. I've just, like, never enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. But now I'm at a point where I, like, can't stand it. Like, if you ever see me at a club or anywhere that's, like, not my home. You're getting paid? Either I'm getting paid or I'm fucking miserable. <laughs> and I was forced against my will to be there. And so. those places used to be your jam. Oh, yes, indeed. You can Google Madison Beer Delilah. There are about <laughs> 700 pictures of me going in and out of that joint. So, yes, it used to be. But I was sick in the head. Um, you <laughs> also, no, I'm not. You also mentioned Madison Beer haters. Are there still a lot of them or are they kind of just fizzled out? Oh, I'm sure there's still an abundance of them, but I just don't like pay attention to them or at least I... Or at least I try not to. Okay, so they've quite. I feel down. like the love is more now. I do feel like it's chilled, um, but also like I'm not. I just came to a point where I was like, people will always have this preconceived notion about me. I literally saw someone comment today actually on something, where they were like, uh, like someone someone said something. I don't know what it was on. I'm trying to remember what it was on. Someone said something about how like I look ugly now or something, and then someone responded and was like, "You can't say she's ugly, but you can sh say that she's brain dead. Like this girl mm. is the dumbest person oh, I've ever fuck. heard speak." I see. And I was like, "Okay, so like that is not true though. Like, and I don't think that that's true. And I think that that's a really unfair observation and yeah, also have... not true. Like, you've probably never seen like an interview of mine. I that's don't it. think that like you would have that assessment if you did. And it doesn't matter to me anymore, honestly, because what I was gonna say is like. People will always have something to say about me. And anyone who's in the public eye, I'm sure that people have shit to say about both of you. Like, people will mm -hmm. quite literally always have an opinion about everyone and everything. So you can't... And this is advice to anyone watching or listening, by the way. Like, you even if you're not a public figure, like, in your life, you cannot die on the hill trying to, like prove and plead to people like please no like this is who I am because the right people eventually will see you for who you are and like it's gonna it's gonna just like figure itself out and that's honestly what I do believe and I feel like I've had more and more people within the last like two years more than ever be like I understand now you know and I don't know I'm just like, over trying to like prove myself to I, people I do feel like Unlike anyone else I've ever known, you've had to fight this battle and climb on this this hill of showcasing who you actually are as a person, unlike yeah. anyone else I've ever seen. Like that's just because yeah. of the way she looks, let's be real. Is and it? I think that's such a like fucked up like I mean Totally like, fucked up. It's fucked it, up. Like like just, no, I'm not yeah, I know you you don't think that, that would be okay, but it's like like is that where we like the society we live is like people Yeah, it's called jealousy. Yeah, I don't like that though. I think that's so so I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. It's, it's, I'm, I'm, if that's the truth of it and it stems all from, I just don't think, I don't think that it does stem from all jealousy. I think that it also stems from like the internet is fucking dangerous and mm. false information spreads so quickly and someone can write or post whatever the fuck they want about me and it can just catch on like wildfire. And then I have like hundreds of thousands of people who believe this about me and I think I've just gone to this stage where like I do know myself and I will I've I can I never can question like who I am what I will what I will do won't say like who I am like I know who I am what I stand for I know what kind of person I am I know that I care about other people I know that I have a good fucking heart and if you don't think that and you disagree you probably don't know me and if you want to feel that way then like I don't I don't really want to spend the rest of my life begging you not to no. and I know that you've both heard me talk about this so it's like I've it hurts I, I me used because to be I sad. Know you. It, like, it, and I feel like people who choose to ignore that side of you or like whatever, they're miss, they're the ones missing out. Yeah, and that's what I've I've realized as I do feel that, that that's true. And I feel like I have a lot to offer as a friend and as someone who like loves other people a fucking lot and cares so much for other people. And if you yeah, if you do want to just see me as like the Instagram model who's probably a bitch, Madison Beer, then like that's fine. And there are plenty of people who won't and people who will love me for who I am and I say that with also wanting to like instill that on any fan or any human being watching this that could potentially be like, you know, feeling in a similar way. Cause it can be really exhausting and tired. We're all human beings. We all want to be liked by people. Yeah. Who the fuck doesn't want to like have people be like, Oh, I really liked that guy. He was cool. Yeah. Everyone, everyone wants to be liked. So it's really difficult when for a majority of my like teen young years, whatever were spent 
feeling like everyone fucking hated me. It was really difficult. But now I'm like, well, I love me. And I know there are people who love me. And <laughs> I've met some really affirming, amazing fucking people. Like even Aaron, who has been co-directing my videos with me, like wrote me this just like ridiculously kind beautiful handwritten letter i had like a, a few people over to my house when spin and the video came out and she like left this like letter on my bed that was just i couldn't really believe it and i still to this day get like very much so moved and touched by people that will say like even someone commented on i just uh, recently released sorry i like will shut up in a second i recently <laughs> released why you're here. i recently released this like uh, vogue released this video doing like a 24 hours with me and i was reading through the comments and some of them were just so sweet and like People being like, I could just tell she has a beautiful soul and she seems like she's such a kind person. And just all those things, like those comments mean the fucking most to me. Like literally they don't, nothing means more to me than people saying stuff like that because I think like your character is quite literally everything. Your character is fate. And so when I read like Aaron's letter that she wrote to me, it's still like, it just, it should show how much I care because it fucking brought me to tears. And I was just like, it's something I'm still not used to. People being like, I love you and I think that you're a good person and I enjoy spending time with you. Like, I'm hesitant to even text some friends of mine sometimes because I'm like, am I annoying everybody? Oh, I get that. Do you know when you, like, leave a party or, like, not a party, like, you're hanging out with people and you leave and you're like, my instinct is to always text people. Sorry if I was weird and annoying. Like, I'm so sorry if I was just, like, being the worst. But then I will do that and people are like, what? You were amazing. We love hanging out with you. What the fuck are you talking about? And I'm like, now I just look fucking crazy. Great. (laughs) Awesome. (laughs) Been there. Sick. Been there. That's always my instinct. Anytime I leave a room, I'll probably fucking text you guys and be like, sorry if I was being annoying and like didn't shut up. But it's rooted in security, which it shouldn't be. And then also like- Well, it's rooted also in conditioning. Yes. 100%. 100%. 100%. People have made me feel like I'm the most annoying person in the world. And I do think that like it's it's about, yeah, it's conditioning. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I never meant to be annoying. I'm sorry that I- Said I was supposed to be in Ariana's video. I'm sorry. <laughs> Were you supposed to be in that? I was. Mm. And I don't even want to bring it up. Or t- I didn't even mean to bring it up. My brain was just like, say it. But it's just like that, even that whole situation, I could laugh at about it now, but it's like, fuck, man. People were so mean to me about that. People were just like, she's so cringe. And why the fuck is she like? And I'm like, listen, the way that I said it was cringe for sure. The way that it came out of my mouth was fucking cringy. But I was just talking to some of my fans and I was just trying to like, I don't know. It was fucking cringe. I will get on the the hate train with you, but I would never lie about something like that. That's what that's what upset me the most. Was I was like, people started calling me a compulsive liar. I was like, oh, wait a second, what? Why would I lie? Why would I lie publicly when I know people are like filming me and stuff? That was what was kind of unfortunate. But yeah, I also that's another example of like, oh, I can't believe I'm talking about this. It gives me anxiety bringing it back up. But you started it. I know my brain <laughs> took over and was like, "Say it I now." I didn't even know it was a thing until I read it in the prep today, and did I've you, known you forever. You really, it, dude. It was a fucking no thing on TikTok. Well, I tweeted recently. This is what made me feel like I could start like a very traumatic event. I could start speaking about it. it. Was because someone was like, "When's Presley gonna be in the video?" And I responded like, "He was actually supposed to be in the video." Um, and people <laughs> people thought it was funny. So I was like, "Okay, I can make a joke about this now and not get like ripped on." But that situation, for example, like I could have easily posted proof that I was going to be in it. I could have easily like kiboshed that. But I'm like, go ahead. You guys can all just shit on me and have your fun. And apparently there is like people are territorial on it. Like some people believe that you it is real and some people think you're a liar. Our producer personally believes you. She Thank put you. that in the, the notes for some reason. <laughs> Thank you. So. And yeah, it's also like if people, I just would never, I, I don't really like think there would be a point in lying about that. And um. Yeah, I don't know. It was just it was just weird. I think that I will the only thing I can give to people though is obviously the way that I said it was definitely cringy. Moving on. And just like that, you brought it up and you addressed it, and now it's done. Yay! I'm free of the shackles. <laughs> you know what else you addressed? So you're it now was just stupid. Because I could have I but that's what I'm saying. Sorry, I want no, you to go. No, that's but that's fine. what I'm saying. Like you're... I could have easily I could have <laughs> easily <laughs> proved it wrong, you know? Like I have I have receipts of this. Yeah. It's not like something I just pulled out of my ass. No, but then that looks ridiculous. And then what am I going to do? Be like, no, look, guys, I no, swear. It's no, like, you got to shut up and just let it do its thing. It's fine. Yeah. Literally, if that's the worst thing people feel is that I lied I'm about that. I'm glad you didn't pull out receipts. That would have been no, even more It would have been literally more embarrassing to like prove my case to these random people no. who want to think this. Like, it was fucking cringy. Let's all agree. And now let's move on. Go ahead, Dan. Um. <laughs> okay. Congrats on your new career as a Twitch streamer. <laughs> Oh my God, thank you. I haven't done it in so long though. I know. And I know you, I, I don't have the tweet or wherever the hell you said it, but somebody said like, why would you become a Twitch streamer? People are just going to say you as. Oh yeah. My response to that. Yeah. What was your response to that again? It was something along the lines of like, <laughs> what, are you, what are you looking for? for? Just some lip balm. Okay. okay. That's fine. May I apply? Yeah. Yep. Great. Thank what you. What are you wearing? Who is it? It's Ooh. Rode by oh. Hailey Bieber. I love this stuff. It's so, it's just so fucking Is good. it good? 
It's like tastes like salty caramel and it's delicious. Anyway, oh, what? I'll let you try some after yeah, we're done. That shit. Delicious. Same. So yeah, that was that response um was I remember saying something along the lines of like, well, people are just always gonna say this about me. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm very used to people being like, isn't she just an influencer? And I'm like, I've quite literally been releasing music for a decade, but like, sure. And I'm at the point where I don't, again, like I just kind of don't care anymore. Like if that's what X amount of people want to think about me, then that's fine. And maybe I'm doing a bad marketing job with my music. And I I don't know. I just like, I I can't like, again, die on a hill being like, no, see me. Like, cause there are people who will without me having to do that. Um, So the Twitch streaming thing. Yeah, of course I knew that people were going to be like, well, this isn't very artist like of you. And I'm like, well, who makes the fucking rules and what is, what is there? There there is nothing. There's nothing. And I can do whatever I feel like doing. And it was really fun Twitch streaming for a while. And I might go back, who knows? But I just like, life is too short to be like, well, I can't do this because I'm a singer and I'm an artist. It's like, you actually can. And I don't know who's told you that you couldn't. Mm -hmm. And you enjoy it. You have fun and it shows different sides of you and you get to build community in a different realm. Exactly. And it's so lovely. And I had a great time and like shout out to anyone who watched those. It was a very good time. And uh, yeah, I'm also just, like I said, it's going to happen no matter what. So I might as well have fun doing shit that I enjoy while people are saying that about me. What am I going to do? Not do anything I find fun and then still have people perpetuate this narrative that I'm like just an influencer. I'm like, well, I'm sure there was a time in your life where you did make decisions off what people are going to say. Oh my God. Every decision. Yeah. All of them. It was literally like, oh, no, I can't do this because I'm trying to establish myself as an artist and not an influencer, even though I got signed as an artist when I was 12. It's just still, it's like for a long time I did. And now I'm like, people will always say this about me. So there is no point in holding myself back from fun things that I want to try. Just live your life. Living my life, man. Madison Beer lives her life. She has full control, and you can hear that control in silence between songs. The album is waiting for you. There's a link in the description below. Also, also like anything else she's made except for that song she sang in her bat mitzvah, <laughs> uh, is waiting for you on Amazon Music. Thank you. Every time you say that, I think that's going to be, it's going to be finished and I get scared. Sweet Relief is my favorite song. Yay. Really? It's a fun song. It's a good one. I have a little star next to that one. Yay. I love that for you. That's it. Do you like dance around <laughs> in your little dark room? To yeah. It? Just dance around. Just me, With your candlestick no, and your I'm, gown. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> put on a gown. What, what is this image you have of him? Like, I, like, he literally lives in like Harry Potter land. It's like it's, the 1900s. And <laughs> yes. That's what Dan. <laughs> I'm Amish. <laughs> yeah. So. I, I can tell. That was my comment. I like the song. Anything else? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I did have another random note here. Tell me if this means absolutely nothing. Um, let me find it. Are you nervous? I don't know. No, it's I, Dan speaking no. to me. You once said reckless. The story behind reckless is crazier than you could even imagine. Is that true? It is. Yes, it's true. And I will not be telling it to you today. Damn. What does it stem from? A very real situation that happened to me with two people who I will not name. And that's what I have to say. <laughs> I'll tell you guys after. Cool. Happily. Oh, okay. That's that's great. It's not not for <laughs> her. I don't, I, don't, I don't care about anybody who listens to this. I care about myself and not I get the for story. Her. Not for her. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I care about you, but like I get the story. No, I mean her. I'm not telling oh, her, her. Her, yeah, her. I'm not telling her the story. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you guys the story. Oh, let's keep running these down. Uh you wrote on this album, <laughs> Silence Between Songs, you wrote two opposite songs on the same day. I wrote At Your Worst and Sweet Relief on the same day. Oh yeah, they're pretty opposite, huh? Yes. Quite literally opposing records. Wow. Why'd you do it on the same day? We just had time. We finished, I think we did Sweet Relief first, and then we were like, I have. I was like, I have another idea, and it was completely different, but we finished them both literally on one in one day. Just to flex on you real quick. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool. No, but also, like, again, like, completing that circle, like, that cycle. Yeah. No, it was very, it was very fun. That was a very cool day. What else you got, Dan? Um, have you watched The Notebook yet? Have I ever watched The Notebook? Or the movie? I don't know. It just says you're waiting to watch The Notebook with someone special. That was That's an old, wherever you got that is old, because I watched it like over two years ago. Oh, two years ago. I mean, it's, you're still, yeah, it's still a long time, whatever. But but I, that's like kind of recently, I guess, like yeah. for like how long The Notebook's been out. Who'd you watch it with? With Nick. Cute. Yeah. I just like never wanted to watch it because I was like, this has to be like a cute moment, you know? And did it live up to the hype? It. I was hysterical like a fucking baby, bawling my ass out. I couldn't breathe. I have pictures. I took photos of myself. That's how hard I was crying. <laughs> it was crazy. So success. Success. The notebook got me. What else you got, Dan? Um, well, um, no, I already know the answer to that one. Well, they might <laughs> not. 
Do you have Do you have fun at Coachella? No. Okay. Exactly. Why didn't you have fun at Coachella? I just like I went. I went. I was pretty sick when I went. Like not pretty sick. I was so I was sick the week before, mm. and I was like I have to get better. Got better. Still felt a little bit under the weather. I just had like a fucking very minor head cold. But like you know when you just feel that like yeah. sickiness in your throat. So I felt like sick, and then I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go. I got there. I had an IV. I had like all these vitamins stuff. I had a doctor come check me out, and he was like, "You're totally fine. Jesus. There's like nothing contagious. You literally like just don't feel well. Like you're fine." And I was like, "Okay, cool. So I'm good to go." Obviously, I'm not trying to get people sick. So I went, and I just I don't know. Like there was moments that I loved. You saw me and Brittany mm. together going fucking ape shit for Rosalia. Like that was like the highlight of the weekend. But like, I don't know. I just I don't. I think it's again like I have a hard time like talking to people and wanting to be in public. Yeah, I'm done mm-hmm. with Coachella, I think. I think unless I there's know. people who I'm like, I need to see them. And I felt that way about the gorillas and I felt that way about like a few other people this year. But unless there's a lineup that I'm like, I have to see you, mm. I don't think I want to go back. What if you're or unless per- I'm performing. Yeah, you go. Then we love Coachella. Oh, then we hit you up for them artist passes. Hells yeah, boy. But yeah. I I don't know. I just think like going and attending stresses me out a little bit. Yeah, that's it. why I've never been. I left on Saturday. That's why. It's just, it's a, it's a little too far for me. It's a lot of people. <laughs> I left on Saturday. I just was like, I am feeling like I want to leave. Good decision. Yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Good decision. All right. Thank you. What else you got? Um, 17. We briefly touched on it, but like you said, you don't really regret it, but if you could go back, would you like redo some things? Yeah, I mean, I always give kind of the same, like, spiel when oh, people ask me questions. Don't answer that. That's a bad question, then. No, it's a good question. <laughs> I'm going to answer it. I was going to say, I always give the same sort of thing, which is, like, no, because I feel like I wouldn't be the person I am today if I changed anything. But, of course, there are certain things that I'd be like, don't go there. Stay away from that person. Don't don't speak about how you're supposed to be in Ariana's video on camera. <laughs> don't do that. And don't do a bunch of other shit. You know, I mean, like, I've made mistakes and I openly will admit, like, I've said things and done things that I now look back on and I'm like, you fucking idiot. Like, don't say that. Um, But I'm a human being that, like, makes mistakes and does things that I can now grow and look back on and be like, no. Um, But no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't, honestly, because everything I've gone through has shaped me to be the person I am today. And I'm and I love the person I am today. Yeah, it seems like you're in a great place. Thank you. That was a genuine thing. Thank you. Yeah. Crafting the best music I think you've ever made. That. Definitely the best music you've ever made. Thank you so much. It means a lot to me. Well, you mean a lot to us. You mean a lot to me. You're amazing, Madison Beer. I'm so happy that I was here, and I'm here right now. I'm so happy. Yeah, thank you. You guys are my favorite. I look forward to my... I literally release albums to do a Zach Sang interview. You you tease them in ways that I never thought... Like, you drop them in every one of your live chats, it seems. I talk about you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, this is like a... This is my Super Bowl. I love and you know what? Mutual. One day we will do like a little sleepover where yeah. your fans can come. I, I know do you want to so do that. Bad. I want to do it. So wrong. I feel like whenever I see you on public, it's the only thing you ever say is, "I want to do one of those." I want to do it so bad, and I loved when Ariana did it. I thought it was so sweet and cute, and it seemed so fun. <laughs> Which is the most ridiculous thing we ever put together in 24 hours. I know. You it's, said it was stressful. I know. And people love those. <laughs> I'm sure it is, but it they're seems so no, fun. They're so hectic. Yeah. But they, they pay off. But so it's like, supposed to be, I feel like. Yes. Well, to be fair, we flew 36 people here in less than 24 hours or 48 hours. Or yeah, that, that's. I would give you more prep time. Thank you so much. If that makes you feel better. But you know, it seemed it really exciting. fun. It was, it was fun. It was cool. It was different. It but seemed it was just like, so fun. I feel like she seemed so comfortable yeah. and so just like happy to be in the room with them. And that's how I feel like I have the same relationship with my fans. So I really want to do it. Yeah, it was that couch. Literally sent, like, we were, it was covered around uh, love sacks, and then Pharrell was in the corner. I think we should do it. Yeah, I'm down. I, I pitched it. We'll pitch it again. Let's do it. Next, I love it. Next album. Or no. this one. This one, oh, Dan. You want to, okay, Jesus, sorry. Dan. I didn't know you wanted Dan. to come back so soon. Shut the fuck up, I want to be back here in two weeks from today. <laughs> I'm sitting right the fuck here, and there's going to be 36 people on this fucking floor. Madison <laughs> Beer and all of her beer bellies. <laughs> Stop it. That's going to be your- <laughs> Stop it right now. Ew, ew. Do not let that catch on. Wait, please. That's going to be that's They want to some some of them are like we're the alcoholics. I'm like no no. <laughs> that's bad. That, that's no, no, bad. No. That's real bad. Rewind. <laughs> Fuck, man. That's going to be your fan names, the beer bellies or the alcohol this this is these are the options that I've been presented with. We could do so much better. <laughs> we could do so much fucking better. God damn it. Go back to the drawing board and once you come back with a great name, I'll put together a slumber party for you. Oh, that's actually If you're good. watching, how about this? If you're watching this and you want that to happen, yeah. leave a comment. Yeah. Oh, if yeah, that's good. Well, no, maybe it'll be too late by the time this comes out. No. Yeah. Yeah. I want this to happen like the week of the album release. I want this to happen. I'll figure it out. I demand it to happen. I'll, I'll figure it out. 
We, I just want to be in a room with them so bad and hang out with them. We can do that. I How long was it when you guys did it? Hours. Oh. <laughs> I want to do like a it, six hour. It one. was. Everybody I, was there till 2 a.m. Yeah, it got want. to the point where Ari was like, no, no, no. I'll pay for everyone. Yeah. And they're overtime. <laughs> like, no. Yeah, Ari, <laughs> Ari, Ari. Good night. Yeah, it was, with, everyone was there for like four ish hours. Ariane was the last one to leave. She stayed until like three in the morning. That will be me. Like, yeah. I just want to. I think that we're similar in that way where we just want to like be around them. We yeah. just fucking love them she so much. Really? Yeah, she loves it. And, and, and also, like, every, you know, that was like a team effort. She put so much work into it. She had everybody on her team. Like, everybody on her team turned into, like, I mean, they were, like, it was, it, it took a fucking village to fly 30, again, 36 people here. You know what I mean? But then you would have to bring, like, Leroy would have to come. You have to bring people that. Yeah, Pharrell part. showed yeah, up. yeah, Leroy's coming. Leroy, I'm, I can't bring you Pharrell, but I could bring you Leroy. No, I, I, want, who is... I want the people who are <laughs> Leroy, Tim, Jeremy. Yeah. It'd be real Lucy. weird if Pharrell showed up and he's like, I'm not Anyone who's Zal. willing, yeah. Pharrell's like, hey guys, I guess we're here for another slumber party. Um, whoever whoever works on my album will happily come. Leroy for sure is in. He will. He loves this shit. And here's the fans love him. Here's the deal. Your brother uh, needs to come. My brother will probably come for like 30 minutes and then be like, all right, I'm fucking out. That's all we need him for. Yeah, but we can put this together. We have a whole space next door. We'll, we'll oh, get to shit, work. We do. You're like, we should have kept that from her. Yeah, we're going to do this. Madison Beer's album is waiting for you. <laughs> Silence between songs. Listen to it. You have a big day today. <gasps> I have a hole in my Uggs. Uh, that's Call the police. Hello, 911. Literally, what are we going to do about this, this catastrophe? Is a, this is an emergency. This is an emergency. Are you not wearing pants? Socks? She's wearing, oh. I'm not wearing <laughs> pants. Oh, it's camp. Okay. I'm I not gotta, wearing pants. I got to go. Madison Beer, everybody. Hey! Love you guys. You're incredible. We're going to do a summer party. We are. I'm going to do it unless you want to or not. So, <laughs> and you will be there. So, see you then. We're, we're going to do one. <laughs>